I'm going to quickly show you how to create a dual carriageway in Site 3D with two center lines. I want to join onto this existing or pre existing roundabout here, which you can see on the survey, and we'll do that when, in the same way that we junction onto existing roads, and you can see that in one of our other videos. And I want to join that to this other roundabout that's already been added over here, which was part of a previous video showing how to add a link road between two roundabouts. We've already added the centerline in both horizontal and vertical here, both of these two centerlines, I should say. And we've added them to the inside channel here because I don't want a crown line on the drivable path here. So what I want to do now is just add my channels, curbs, and footways to both center lines. So let's go and add my go to my center line tools, channels, curbs, and footways. Select the uh, northern uh, center line here, and I want to add a uh, channel to my left hand side here. So I'm going to hit the pick button on the left channel, turn on my snap to uh, any point in the line to help me choose the location, and choose the uh, offset. Now I also want to do a utility strip on the side here, uh, but I don't want a curb in between them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my curb offset to one mil, so it's not directly over the channel line, and set the curb height to zero, so it won't make any uh, level difference to the surface. Now I want to just pick the uh, the uh, utility strip width, and I'm going to use my footways to uh, do this for me. So just put that off the drawing, 2.5. And you can see here on the preview, we have it mirrored left and right. Now I don't want that one, so I'm going to untick right is a duplicate of left and set the right hand channel offset to zero because we've drawn the uh, center line along the uh, right hand channel here. And I'm going to set the cross fall to one in minus 40 because actually I'm going to widen out that channel in a little bit uh, and I want it to fall all in the same direction like that. And we just don't need any curbs or footways on the right hand side at all. I'm going to click OK. And it's now going to offer me a junction onto this end here. And I want to do a 50 meter uh, curve on that side, which will smoothly transition from the pre existing roundabout onto my uh, carriageway. And the inside, because I'm not expecting anyone to be turning this way, I'm going to drop this one right down to one meter. Click Create Junction, and that will now update this end here and put my road all the way along the end, uh, all the way along to the other side. And you can see it's automatically joined in uh, to the roundabout here. So what I want to do is update this junction now. So I'm going to go into my uh, roundabout tools, edit this junction arm, and set this to a 25 meter curve here. Uh, and similarly to the other junction, I'm not going to be turning right here. So I'm going to set this to a one meter curve because I want it to uh, do that. Now I don't want any splitter islands on here. So I'm going to set these to a large value that uh, uh, will turn, uh, cause them to turn off because they can't be calculated. And then I can click OK and that junction will now update like that. So I just want to do the same to the other side here. And you can see we, you know, it differs in the horizontal path here. Um, so I can now add my uh, channels, curves and footways to this one. And this time I'm adding it to the right hand side so I can untick right so duplicate of left and tick the um, pick the uh, the width off the drawing. So again, this is going to be uh, 7.3. Yep. So just confirm that one, just picking it off the drawing. That's 7.3. So similarly to the other side, this is going to be a one mil uh, offset curb with a zero height difference. And I can just type in 2.5 meter offset for that one. The left hand side I can set as a zero offset channel line because the left hand side is on the uh, the inner island here. And I can set that also to a one in minus 40 and I can just untick create curb as well. So this is basically a, a uh, sort of mirror of the other side over here. Uh, hit OK. And that will now offer me a junction. So uh, similarly, I'm not expecting people to turn right here. So that's going to be a one meter curve. And this one needs to be a 35 meter curve, I think. Yeah, but it's not going to match the channel line here yet because I need to widen out to allow for an additional sort of queuing lane. So I'll do that in a minute. So hit create junction. That will now update and add my second um, uh, carriageway on all the way to the end. So I'm going to scroll to the other end and you can have a look. So it's also done the other junction. Uh, if I go into the junction tools and edit that arm, you can see it didn't actually manage to create a 20 meter curve in here, so it's defaulted to put a one meter in just to uh, curve it out. So I'm going to explicitly tell it I want that to be one meter just to make sure it doesn't change in the future. And the outside, I want to be a 100 meter curve on that one. 
that then smoothly junction on like that. And the same with this, I don't want a, any splitter lines on this one, so I'm gonna set the entry and exit road width to something large, so it'll uh, not calculate it for me. There we go. Okay, and that will now update my junction. Right, so that is the uh, uh, carriageways added. I want to now make some minor alterations to them. So I want to widen them out in certain locations. Um, so let's add those uh, channel and footway um, widenings uh, now. So I'm gonna go into add widening, change my uh, snaps to snap to point and just widen from here to here. And that looks like it should be an 8.3. So let's just uh, 8.3 offset there. Okay on that one. And that'll now add that widening all the way to the end. So if I scroll to the end, we can see we actually want to narrow it just before the end on this quite sort of slack grade here. Um, a change in direction, I should say. So let's add a widening, or a narrowing in this case. So I want to uh, narrow from there down to there. And because this is such a uh, small change in angle here and here, I want to smooth those out. Um, let's just put in something like a 600 meter curve on here, both here and here. That'll smooth those out and make it uh, aesthetically pleasing. Okay, and apply, and that will now update. If I go to the 3D view here, you'll see that has gone all the way along and you can see that smoothly um, uh, narrows back down at the end here. So um, what I want to do, let's see if we can just have a look at the whole thing now. If I zoom out, you'll see the whole carriageway. It cuts in in the middle because uh, we're going underneath an existing road here. Um, but if I turn off the existing ground, you can see the uh, the two carriageways um, meandering across the uh, the existing existing ground here. Right, so I want to um, widen out the uh, the other side here of this northern carriageway. So let's, I'll just go in the opposite direction this time. I'm going to um, widen from here to here, and that's going to be a one meter curve. Okay, on, oh actually I also want to put in my 600 meter uh, curve radius, oh, radius values into this one and this one. Okay, on that one, it'll smooth it out. I can then zoom out and go into the other end over here where we want to narrow it back down again. So narrow it from here to here. And I can just click OK, and that will now apply all the way along this edge here. You can see that's now been brought in. So I just need to do the same on the southern um, center line, southern carriageway here. So I'm going to edit this one. I'm going to widen out from there through to there. And I could put in something like a 300 meter on this one. I think those are slightly, uh, there's a slightly bigger angle change on that one. OK on that. And go all the way to the end and narrow it back down again over this distance there to there okay apply on that one and then i can do the other side so i'm going to edit that one and i'm going to oops do a uh, widening from there through to there so then i can uh, okay on that one and i can zoom out and have a look at the other end of this thing where I want to narrow it back down again. So I'm gonna narrow from there through to there, which is 7.3. And again, I could put on something like a 300 meter uh, curve on those two points. So, okay there. Before I apply it, obviously I could just apply it now, uh, but I also want to widen out for this bit here. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna do a widening from this tangent point here through to the IP position. So I'm going to snap to arc of this curve here. So click from there to there. That'll extend that straight all the way along here. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to click OK on that one. So now I can see my parallel there afterwards is not at the same direction as the end indicated in the layout. So what I want to do is do another winding from this IP through along this straight here. And I'm going to use my um, extension construction lines to help me pick that. So I'm gonna turn off snap to arc to help me locate that straight, there we go. So I want to do a widening from that arc through to, well, basically to the end over here, there we go. And I can click okay on that one 
and you can see I now have an angular widening that goes from here out to that IP and then along the direction that I want it to go. So all I need to do now is curve that out with a mitre. So I'm going to say choose the straight on this side to the straight on this side and I can pick the radius off the drawing. So that's 125 meter. OK. And when I hit apply, it'll now update the whole junction as well. And you'll see that on the 3D view change all the way along there. There we go. So now we have that, uh, we want to well match the other end of this. So on the footways, or uh, well, you, you, the utility strips here, you can see that we don't quite match what we want to. So I want to widen that out here. So I'm going to edit the back of footway there, and I'm going to do a widening from somewhere here through to somewhere over here. Uh, 3.5, that should be. No curves on that one, and just OK. And apply, and that makes that change there. And we can do the same on this side here if we wanted to edit that one and just do a widening from just before to just after and OK on that one and you'll see and apply that that makes those changes for us then you can see that now matches and ties in right so now we can see all of that aspect and we can see the whole um, uh, dual carriageway in uh, in plan here. I want to have a look at the uh, uh, vertical aspects very very quickly. So what I want to do is I want to look at the cross sections of this. So if I add go to my uh, centerline top options here and uh, show cross sections for say this northern arm here here. I want them at uh, something like a 25 meter interval. But I also want to see both in the same cross section here. So what I want to do. So I can compare the levels that is. So what I want to do is change the width. So I'm going to make this something like a uh, 60 meter width either side. And I can then click OK and that will now bring up the cross sections through all of them. And you can see that's going all the way along. So now if I zoom in, you'll see the cross sections of the roads um, either side shown vertically. So here we can see we are significantly cutting in. And actually what I can do is add on my interfacing. So let's do that very quickly. Add on interfacing uh, to this side. And I just want it to be a one in three. I don't want it on the right hand side. I don't want anything on the inside here. I just want it on the outside. And that's OK. That'll now update that. You can see that's updated on the cross sections as well as we've done it. I'll just do the same on the outer side here. So I want this on the right hand side. So I don't want anything on the left. And again, one in three on that one road there we go that now ties into existing ground so you can see just how much we're cutting in here underneath this existing road and you can see that on the long on the cross sections as well and you can see we're also over here we're actually slightly above over here we're actually slightly above the ground here so if we wanted to we could go into the long section of one of these roads and we could make some adjustments we could pull things around so um we are at the uh, 890 meter sort of chainage range. So we can zoom in here. We can see that we're at uh, 1,900. Um, so we're in, in this uh, vicinity here. I think this is uh, 925, 825. So we're going to be in this vicinity here. If I just zoom in a little bit, we can see what we're going to be getting. And I can make some changes so I could hit move point. I could change the gradients if I wanted to. I could change the curves if I just pull this around. This all updates the interfacing, the cross sections, the long sections, the uh, contours, everything is updating as I make some changes. And I can pull this around. I could set the gradients if I wanted to and they all make some changes as I go. It allows me to uh, design this thing as I want it. You can see pulling this one down here will make those changes and bring that down more in level with it. So it gives you full flexibility over your carriageway design. Thank you.